Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore indeed I send you prophets, wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, How often I wanted to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you will see me no more, till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we share together the conclusion of Matthew chapter 23, verses 33 to 39. For three chapters, Jesus has been interacting with the Pharisees, who have opposed him, challenging his authority, trying to trap him in their tests. And Jesus has been laying out before everybody the faults of the Pharisees, that their righteousness was external and superficial it wasn't of the heart and so they focused on tithing for example rather than justice and mercy but tithing relates to material things justice and mercy relates to people people are more important than material things many things are important but some are much more important than others and our focus needs to be on the real issues of life, not the external appearance, but dealing with the issues of sin in our hearts. Throughout history, God has had righteous people on the earth, but the wicked have opposed them. The wicked have used their power against them. It began when Cain slew Abel, and in the scriptures it's gone through, Jesus says, until they murdered the prophet Zechariah whose prophecy, the second last in the Old Testament, tells of the judgment that will come upon the people until they acknowledge Jesus, their Messiah, whom they have pierced, who will come to them in a future day. So the murdering of the righteous has been a characteristic tool that Satan has used in opposing God, and he's used men to do it. God has frequently sent people to the nation of Israel and now Christians have been sent out into all the world and many of them have been persecuted and killed and it's said that there are more Christians persecuted and killed in this generation than there's ever been in the history of the world before. So Jesus calls out to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more, till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So this is the end of Jesus' reasoning with the Pharisees and scribes and chief priests. The following chapters, he's speaking to his disciples, preparing them for the future. The future which involves the destruction of Jerusalem. Your house is left to you desolate. The Jewish people would be dispersed among the nations. They would not be protected. A hen gathers her chicks under her wings that she might protect them. And so the Lord wanted to gather his people together under his wings to protect them. But they were not willing. And so it is today. People neglect God. They neglect salvation. They don't come to him for salvation. They experience all kinds of hardships in their lives, but don't think that God is an answer for them. It is that 
you were not willing. So with respect to the Jewish nation, they would crucify their Messiah. What they had done to the prophets over the centuries, they would now do to the Son, whose life before them had been exemplary. They had not found fault with him. Rather than seeing the evidence, they demanded yet more evidence. And yet, what better evidence could they have had that Jesus was unique and special? They were always astounded at the things that he said, amazed at the things that he said, surprised by the things that he did, whether it was stilling the storm, raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, or forgiving sins. All of these things pointed out to the fact that this ordinary-looking man that stood before them was in fact no ordinary man. He was God in the flesh. But God would hold them to account. For Jesus says, I've sent you all these prophets and teachers, and you've persecuted them and killed them, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. God would hold the nation of Israel to account for all the prophets that they had slain. And so if you look at the history of the Jewish people in particular over the last 2,000 years, it's amazing the persecution and suffering that they have been called upon to experience. They continue to exist. God has preserved them as a people. But as Jeremiah prophesied, they have been cut down time and time again. Whenever they rise up, they are cut down again. Until the day comes when they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that day is coming, for that is the clear prediction of prophecy. Jesus says, you will see me no more until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yet it is soon, for the nation has been gathered together back into Jerusalem in the last 60 years. They don't believe yet. They're not yet acknowledging the Lord Jesus, but they are preparing the scene for the day when the enemies of Israel will gather around the city to destroy it because they bear testimony to God and they then will call on the Lord to save them and they will acknowledge that Jesus was indeed right because of the scriptures that we'll read when we continue in chapter 24, among other scriptures. The mistake that the Pharisees made is that they focused on the external things of their religion. They had a great respect of God as a judge, and so they were fearful of doing the wrong thing. They made lots of extra rules to try and make sure that they did the right thing. But of course, in focusing on these rules, they were missing the whole point of God's character. God had given the rules as a help to them, but his focus is not on the particulars of the rule. His focus is on the principles that underpin the rule. While they would focus on their sacrifices, he focuses on their obedience. And the Old Testament contains the passages that teach us what does the Lord require of you? Humility, mercy, justice. But they were proud. What is the character of God? Surely, if they would worship the true God, they would become like him. The character of God is one of grace and mercy, of patience, of goodness, of truth, of forgiveness and of justice. And a society that focused on God should be full of those characteristics. The commandment to love God with all your heart and to express that love by loving your neighbour as yourself. This is all the law and the prophets. The God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. But they had focused on the external things and not sought to know God. Oh, that we might be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Are you willing? How often I would gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. 